Welcome to another exciting video on the fossil record. My name is Benjamin Berger and this week I thought I would take a recent suggestion I received during last week's Q&A and do a video on the fossil record of the family Canidae and discuss the evolution of dogs and their kin. Now what I want to do with this video is to explore the fossil record, to really push it back in time, to look, if we can, at the fossils that led up to the origin of the modern dog, and really examine what led to the success of the Canid family in the modern day. This is an underdog story because, as I will highlight through this video, dogs were just one group and a very small group at that of carnivorous mammals that emerged after the extinction of the dinosaurs. Today the family includes about 35 living species divided into four major groups. The wolves, coyotes, and domesticated dogs and jackals, the European descendant red and arctic foxes and their kin, the South American foxes and wolves such as the Maine wolf, and the North American gray fox. The domestication of dogs from wolves is an intriguing mystery, as it is difficult to determine when this took place. North American settlement around 12,000 years ago brought various breeds of domestic dogs into North America from Asia, and many Native American archaeological sites feature burial sites for their canine companions. Early settlement of Australia around 50,000 years ago, however, did not bring with them dogs, which only show up about 5,000 years ago as dingoes, a variant of dog which still is partly wild or feral today in Australia. Genetic similarities between Australian dingoes and dogs from Southeast Asia indicate that dingoes originated from dogs from Asia. The domestication of dogs from wild wolf populations likely took place between 35 and 15,000 years ago, and during the same time as the domestication of other mammals like horses, cows, and sheep. Dogs proved to be valuable hunting partners, and various breeds have been developed over the years to specialize on different types of hunting. They have also been bred for companionship and love. Wolves, coyotes, and dogs are all very closely related compared to other members of the Canidae family and can produce viable offspring when interbred, suggesting that they may be grouped together within a single species, but are usually not given that it is often a special case for interbreeding in nature to occur between these three types. Together with jackals, the group are all members of the genus Canis. The genus Canis has an extensive fossil record that extends back to the late Miocene epoch, but it was during the various ice ages of the Pliocene and Pleistocene epochs that they became so successful. The largest species of Canis was the extinct Canis dyrus, or dire wolf. Dire wolves are one of the most common fossils from the La Brea tar pits in Los Angeles and roamed across North America and into South America in packs during the Ice Ages, beginning about 250,000 years ago. Canis, as a genus, exhibits a very successful set of characteristics. Its skull exhibits a long snout for a good sense of smell and large auditory bulla in the base of the skull for keenly listening to sounds, and a large temporal region and sagittal crest for insertion of strong, biting muscles. The teeth were specialized for eating meat with a single set of carnassial or slicing teeth between the upper fourth premolar and lower first molar, which was enlarged. The upper first and second molars were small and reduced, and they occluded with the smaller lower second and third molars in the lower jaw. These small posterior teeth still allowed Canis to crunch 
and chew food, giving them the option for a more omnivorous diet that could include fruits and vegetation if needed. Canis also had large canines and slicing premolars, which served well with a mostly meat diet. The group did really well during the oscillations between glacial and interglacial climates during the late Pliocene and Pleistocene, often invading new regions across Europe and Africa multiple times during these oscillations. Canids first arrived in Asia, Europe, and Africa about 7 to 5 million years ago, near the end of the Miocene epoch, as the climate began to cool and sea level was lower. The oldest Canis species is Canis ferox, known from about 10 million years ago in North America. In fact, it is within the North American continent that the family Canidae has its most ancient fossil record, a fossil record that extends all the way back into the Eocene epoch and maybe beyond. The Miocene epoch from 24 to 5 million years ago was a warmer period of time, with a savanna-like environment that was more forested than today. Within these forests, there lived a diverse group of bone-crunching dogs. These were the Boraphagia dogs. This extinct group specialized in eating and scavenging on meat. And while not as specialized as hyenas, they fulfilled that niche here in North America. These bone-crunching dogs lived for nearly 30 million years, but they never made the journey into Asia, Europe, or Africa, nor did they migrate into South America, likely because the group was extinct by the time the continents became connected through the Isthmus of Panama in the Pliocene. Boraphagian dogs resemble modern dogs, but are united as a group because of the widened lower first molar, a tooth that within the group expanded to accommodate crushing rather than just slicing. The group was diverse during the Miocene, with later forms becoming a large wolf in size, uh, with some of the larger members including Eluriodon, Episcion, and Boraphagus. Boraphagus typifies the group with a robust skull, pit bull-like snout, and thick, strong neck. These bone-cracking dogs lived up to their name and were a dominant carnivore in many late Miocene fossil sites. However, this group lived alongside the Amphicinidae, or bear dogs which were large carnivores that extended across North America and Asia, and were by far the largest carnivores during the Miocene epoch, and evolved from a different stock of mammals back in the Middle Eocene, and thus are only loosely related to true canids. In addition to the Boraphagian dogs, there was another more primitive fox-like group of true canids. These are grouped within the Hesperocynidae subfamily and are recognized in having sharper lower first molars that were more specialized for eating meat. The Hesperocynidines tend to be smaller than the bone-crushing dogs, although the last member of the group, the Oligocene and Miocene Osbornadon, was comparable to modern wolves in its size. As a more primitive group, the Hispersinidine canids uh, arose near the end of the Eocene with the genus Hesperocyon. Now, Hesperocyon was a slender, fox-like canid that was fairly common in the late Eocene and early Oligocene rock units of Nebraska, Colorado, and Wyoming. But they have been found across much of North America. Now, Hesperocyon is widely regarded as the ancestral fossil to all later members of the Canidae family, and it's primitive enough to fulfill that role. If we then want to jump further back in time and go back into the middle to early Eocene of North America, we're going to have to jump out of the family Canidae and into a problematic group called the Myacidae. 
Now, the Maesidae are the group that early Canids, like Hispracyon, evolved from. But it is a group that is represented by a jumble of fossilized forms, of which we mostly know only from fossilized teeth and jaws, rather than whole skeletons. The Middle Eocene was also a time period of numerous other carnivorous mammals, such as Mesonychids, Arctocyonids, Hyenodontids, Oxyhenid creodonts, all competing to be top predators. Hence, our dog ancestor had to contend with lots of competition. Another problem in tracing the fossil record back further in time is that there is a period around 40 million years ago where the fossil record is not as complete here in North America. And it is during this time interval where we should see a transition between the Myacidae family and the true Canidae family uh, occurring here in North America. We also see the extinction, or at least decrease, in other groups of carnivores living at the time across this zone around 40 million years ago, which gave canids the advantage in the late Eocene and early Oligocene. There are some very canid-like members of the older early Eocene Myacidae family that I would like to highlight as possible ancestors to later canids. One of the fossils that exhibits some dental similarity to later dogs is the genus Uintocyon. Now, Uintocyon exhibits a short, single-rooted lower third molar, which is reduced, very similar to the condition seen in later fossil canids. It also may have lost its upper third molar, or at least that tooth would have been highly reduced. The upper third molar is absent in canids, and it suggests a close relationship. Uintocyon extends across the early Eocene, where I have found and described several specimens from western Colorado when I was a graduate student. And I've always been struck by the dog-like features of these fossils. The genus has been reported in the latest part of the Paleocene in the Clark Forkian beds of northern Wyoming. Uintocyon was a small, fox-like carnivore and was dwarfed by many of the other much larger carnivores living at the time. During the early Paleocene, things get a little too fragmentary to determine what was going on just after the extinction of the dinosaurs. There are some very fragmentary Paleocene jaws and teeth that indicate that myacid-like mammals were living at the time, such as the fragmentary middle Paleocene Ictidopappus from Montana. Most of these earlier fossils were small fox to weasel-sized mammals, all characterized by having carnassials composed of the lower first molar and upper uh, fourth premolar, a trait that is also shared with cats and other modern members of the order Carnivora living today. Overall, the evolution of dogs and their kin is closely linked to their more recent success as a group, which parallels our own evolution. It is a true underdog story of evolution. I hope that you enjoyed this quest through the fossil record of dogs. If you want to learn more about this topic, I highly recommend this book, Dogs, Their Fossil Relatives and Evolutionary History by Xu Ming Wang and Dick Tedford. Uh, the book features the amazing illustrations of Mauricio Antone, and if you're interested in his paleo art, I highly recommend his YouTube channel that I've linked below in the description. I hope that you enjoyed this weekly video. I want to thank my supporters on Patreon, Brian Clever, uh, Arctotus1811, and Justin Bovey, and all of my Trilobite supporters for making these videos uh, coming and making them freely available on YouTube and encouraging me to make more of them. If you have a suggestion for a video or idea, let me know in the comments section. Thanks for watching.